You know, it wasn't that long ago that the NFL was riding high on the heroics of Pat Tillman, a former NFL player who left the NFL to join the Army because he felt it was what he had to do. And because he made that choice, he lost his life. He gave his life in combat. The NFL made a big deal about you know the ultimate sacrifice that Pat made. Even more recently, a very big deal was made about Alejandro Villanueva getting signed by the Steelers. Here was a Bronze Star recipient now getting to fulfill his dream of being a football player. Flash forward to the increasingly bizarre world present, and you see Mike Tomlin being critical of Villanueva because he decided to stand for the Star Spangled hey, Banner. Yeah. First of all, how do you tell a Bronze Star recipient that no, we're, we're not going to go out for the you know the Star Spangled Banner? We're not doing that. No, you're going to you're going to sit inside because there's a few people in here who might take a knee, and we, we don't want divisiveness in the team, and so we're all just going to stay inside together. Uh, there's so many levels that this is wrong on. You know, first of all, if, if you've got half the team wanting to stand for the flag and the other half doesn't, you've got division. It's there. You can't pretend it's not there by hiding it in the locker room. And you certainly can't justify it by saying, well, we, we want to focus on football and we want to be, you know, focus as our unity as a team, you know, in everyone's hearts, there's, there's something more important than football. And that's in both cases. If, if you believe that the flag is symbolic of, of the men and women who died or were wounded or sacrificed however many years of their lives, even if they weren't injured, to, uh, to protect us, to, who said, you know what, I'm going to take this chunk of my limited life, risk the rest of it, and make sure that you know the rest of the country is safe, and you know that's that's what when people see the flag, that's what they see. That's that's what they they see. The flag is freedom, and the way you get freedom is these fine people who put their lives on the line. And it doesn't matter if you never saw war; you put your life on the line. If you spent five years in Oklahoma, you gave five years of your life doing whatever that was serving the defense of this country. It doesn't matter what it was. Let alone the, the people have seen the fire and the flame and the bullets and the bleeding. I can't, you can't even think about the sacrifices they've had to make. We can't, we, you can't imagine them unless you've had to make them or seen them made. One of our IT guys was very disappointed that he couldn't still be in the army. He still wanted to be serving the army. But he was in a rack, and his job was to knock the door in, and the guy ahead of him didn't quite check for traps well enough, and he got to ride the door for a hundred yards, and it blew him way across the field there, and he was you know, he was injured. He was permanently injured in some fashions, I believe, and they said, "No, you can't you you you, you can't serve in front lines anymore." So he's, he he was honorably discharged, probably a lot of medals. And, and so now he's, you know, still looking for ways where he can do good things. But realize, he's, he got blown up and he's disappointed that he can't continue to face those risks. That's what most people see when they see the flag. Now, there is a movement that's trying to associate the flag with everything they see that is wrong with the country. And I'm not saying that there's not stuff wrong with the country. I mean, obviously, we have a lot to work on. But regardless of intent, okay, and I'm not saying people's intentions are bad here necessarily. Wanting to make the country better is a good thing. But when you disrespect the flag or the Star Spangled Banner, you know, if you're disrespecting the national anthem, what comes across is not, I find a problem with the country and I want to make it better. What comes across is, I disrespect this country, period. I disrespect everyone in it, and I disrespect all the men and women who laid down their lives for it. And in an age when we're not supposed to do anything to offend anyone, I mean, are, have we ever had a more sensitive time? I can't understand how people don't see this and say, well, gee, you know, somebody might be offended by that. Perhaps you shouldn't do that, right? Because we're not supposed to offend anybody. That might not be your intent, but that's what comes across. And there's something very interesting psychologically that goes on with sports because
was. It's not just like, oh, well, I'm going to watch a football game and be objectively interested in it. People invest themselves into the team. You know, there's a reason that the people who are fans of a team dress up like they're on the team. You ever think about that? It's like a really complicated, expensive cosplay exercise. They say to themselves, I'm on that team. I'm like that team. That's why they, they pick a team that somehow they can identify with. It's usually a team that wins, but not necessarily. If you feel like you're an underdog and you really like pulling for the underdog, you'll pick an underdog team and you'll identify with that team and invest yourself in that team. And because it's a team, you can forgive a lot of individual stuff. If you have one person on that team who does something that's completely idiotic, you can say to yourself, well, that guy's an idiot, but the rest of the team is good. They're still my team. That's not like me. I'm not like that. I like this team because in general it has these qualities. And you project an image of what these people are onto your team. You, you, you kind of come up with, it's not like you've ever met any of them probably. Maybe you've met one or two if you're really lucky. But you project all these kind of good qualities onto the team and the members of that team for the most part. So what the Steelers did without realizing it uh, was the worst case scenario. If they had gone out and 10 of their players had knelt down on the field, most of the fans would say, well, those 10 guys, I completely disagree with them. But look, the rest of the team is standing. They're still my team. But then when they stayed inside as a team, What's wrong with now? and only Villanueva came out and he was criticized by his coach for that. And I, I do hope I'm saying his name right. He deserves that respect. What happens is, now you cannot put the, one of the most basic qualities that I think most fans observe of patriotism. You can't project that onto the team. They don't have it. Coach Tomlin has put football ahead of patriotism. Clearly. And everyone, I'm sure there's a lot of Steelers that are unhappy with that. Some of them are, and probably none of them are happy with it because nobody got to express themselves. And now there's so much doubt as to, to what's going on there, it's, it's hard to get behind them. And I'm talking, I've been a Steelers fan since, well, let's see, I was born in 71. So if we go as long as I can remember, should we call it 74? I mean, I remember, the, you know, from being young, watching the Steelers play. I remember watching all the Super Bowls. I remember, you know, my grandfather was just a huge Steelers fan, God rest him. I can't imagine what he'd think of this. Oh my goodness. Pop, what do you think of this one? And while there have been times before where I've been disappointed with this player or that player, or, or this was going on or that was going on, this is the first time where I really looked at all of them and said, you know, guys, I can't wear the shirt anymore. I can't, I can't do it. I just, I can't, I don't want to have the conversations. I don't want to have to defend them. I don't want to have to say, well, you know, really, they just want to avoid controversy, and I, I think it was kind of a cowardly thing, but I don't think they're actually anti-patriotic. Like, I don't want to have to try and do that, and I'm not sure that I can, because if you're staying inside, you know, it's like, it's like the song says, you know, if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Yes, yeah, some people didn't get a chance to disrespect the flag and the anthem, but everybody lost a chance to respect the flag and the anthem. It was denied of them. And I'll be honest, I didn't really care what the other teams were doing. That didn't affect me. You know, if they want to do a pro tell, you know, Kaepernick wants to do this, what do I care? It's not my team. But since it's my team now, and now do I even still want to say that? And I don't know if you've picked up what's going on in the video. I'm repainting my cars. Those were, those, that's a Steelers livery that I was running, and that's, uh, that's going away. I probably don't have the money to do all of them once. And I'm hopeful that the Steelers turn this around, because it's very depressing to look at, oh, heavens to Murgatroyd, 43 years of being a Steelers fan? Like, I, I don't know that I could get rid of that all at once, but I don't want to watch them right now. I, I'm still a fan, I guess, but I don't want to watch them do the wrong thing, in my opinion. I don't want to, want to, I don't want to see this. 
I don't want to think about it, and I don't even want to be reminded of it when I'm playing GTA. So that's why I'm going through the effort and the money in game uh, just to get rid of the imagery, you know? Paint the cars black and gold, like the old John Player special car they used to like in my youth. You know, or give it the Luigi Green paint that I've really liked uh, for a while here. You know, there's there's other things I can do with these vehicles. And it's, so in case you wonder, gee, how come, uh, Black Knight, how come all your cars got repainted? That's, uh, that's where I'm at here with this. I just don't want to watch it anymore. The Ravens are playing the Steelers next week, which is one of the highest rated games of the year, usually. It's always stunning. Why? Because they're always extremely physical. You know, people are watching them like, you know, just like they say people watch NASCAR. They're waiting to see who gets carted off the field. I mean, it's really just a, a really high-intensity, hard-hitting game. Even with all the current, you know, adjustments to the rules, that's usually a really good game. It's a solid... What's the word I'm looking for? Smash Mouth football in an age when they're getting rid of Smash Mouth football kind of thing. And people watch that. And uh, I'm not watching it. I'm not. And maybe if the NFL sees that game go away, maybe they see that, you know, there's there's no participation. I'm not calling for a boycott. I think it's going to happen naturally. People are not going to want to watch because this was an escape for them. This was a place where there wasn't any politics. This isn't Hollywood. This is, this is football. It's a place where I don't have to think about what's going on on CNN and Fox News and everything else. I'm watching football. I don't want to deal with it. You can deal with it enough. I mean, I'm not saying you go into a bubble with life in general, but you, you need a break. You can't constantly be living politics. And I don't know. I don't know what the goal is here. I mean, I don't know what the goal. Are they trying just? Are they trying to brainwash people into hating the country in general? Are they trying to to swell patriotism by a, by a, a backlash against this sort of thing? I don't know why. Why ever? There must be some kind of plan here. Is there a plan? I don't know. Maybe not. That's the scariest part of all. I'd rather have the conspiracy theory going because then, like, at least somebody's in control of this and there's a purpose. This seems it's just. I don't know. I don't know. But this isn't working. And this isn't doing anything, in my own humble opinion, to help race relations or anything like that. I mean, this, if anything, this is just driving the divisions wider. You know, and uh, I don't see I don't see a solution to it in the near future, but I have a feeling it's gonna have a very negative impact on the NFL. And as you can see, you know what it comes down to: whatever they want to do, they can do whatever they want to do. There's the freedom to do that. If NFL wants to be, you know, like this, I mean, the NFL would not let the Cowboys honor. Um, honor some slain police officers from Dallas with a little little sticker on their helmet because that violated a uniform policy. So they're coming off as extremely anti-police. They want to do that. Fine. But I don't want to watch it and I don't want to associate myself with it. So off come the colors. Well, maybe it'll be good. It'll give me the, the freedom to paint my cars in new and creative ways. And uh, maybe you'll see more of that in the, the weeks to come, depending on how things go. But on that note, this is the Black Knight. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how well the length of the speech is going to match up with me repainting all my cars. So you can just watch it all go down if you want to or click out from here on out. But this is the Black Knight. Have a great night.